Hello, and thank you for joining us. We'd like to welcome you to the National Association of Neonatal Nurse Practitioners presentation of Should I Stay or Should I Go? Retaining Expert Level Senior NNP Workforce at the Bedside, NANAP Recommended Solutions and Guidelines, presented by the NANAP Senior Staffing Solutions Task Force. The learning objectives for this webinar are for the audience to be able to identify two issues impacting the shortage of neonatal nurse practitioners, explain the two definitions of senior neonatal nurse practitioner, and analyze the five NANAP recommended accommodations and select two to three that could be implemented in the learner's workplace. In January 2014, a concept was developed by the National Association of Neonatal Nurse Practitioners to form a recruitment and retention task force with a broad demographic, including age, geographic location, and practice setting. The NANAP Council then challenged the task force with identifying factors that are impacting and possible solutions to help alleviate the impending NMP shortage and getting the information and recommendations out to the membership administrations that represent NNPs. As part of an overall goal of increasing the population of NNPs at the bedside, this project reviewed strategies for retaining tenured and experienced NNPs in the workforce. To meet the current and future needs of high risk and critically ill newborns, efforts must focus on recruiting new NNPs as well as retaining existing expert neonatal nurse practitioners. NNPs are highly trained and skilled team members who work in the neonatal intensive care unit, delivery room, transport, primary and acute care unit ca units caring for neonates and infants as old as two years of age. NNP education has specialty neonatal didactic and clinical teaching and is oriented specifically to the neonatal and infant populations. The supply of practicing NNPs currently is not meeting the demand. NNPs have numerous late career options, including taking early retirement or transitioning to academia, home nursing, or administrative work. The Senior Staffing Solutions Task Force focused on finding methods for retaining experienced senior level NNPs in clinical roles. After a review of the literature, a survey was developed and distributed to current NNPs to determine what they consider to be important factors in the decision to remain in the clinical setting. Based on these findings, recommendations for retaining senior NNPs were developed to provide guidance and suggestions for how to best maintain clinical experts for the neonatal population. The findings can be extrapolated to other nurse practitioners and be shared outside the neonatal specialty. Before we go on, we wanted to review the definitions of important terms used throughout the presentation and the white paper. For the purpose of this paper, senior will refer to two categories. The first category of senior NNP includes mature practitioners who bring the benefits of age and wisdom with or without experience. For example, an NNP older than 50 years of age may have very little or a great deal of experience as an NNP because some NNPs previously have had very different careers in nursing and are now new to the NNP profession. Older NNPs may need accommodations to address the challenges often associated with an aging person, such as visual and fatigue issues. The second category includes experienced individuals with extensive knowledge of the NMP role, regardless of age, keeping in mind that some NMPs enter the profession at a younger age. Keep in mind that the number of years of experience required to be considered experienced is fluid and depends on the individual setting or group. It was important to the NANAP Council to get across the understanding of encouraging older healthcare workers and more senior practitioners to remain in the workforce and what sort of strategies can be employed to accommodate their changing needs and abilities. In order to explore issues related to the aging healthcare workforce and begin to understand and address retention of NNPs, the NANAP Council sponsored a workforce survey. Based on the survey data, recommendations for creative senior staffing solutions were developed into a white paper, which can be found on the NANAP website. By 2050, the US Census predicts that 19.6 million American workers, which is roughly 19% of the total workforce, will be 65 years of age or older. In fact, the number of individuals in the labor force who will be 65 or older is expected to grow by 75% but the number of individuals ages 25 to 54 years in the workforce is expected to grow by only 2%. For the nation's healthcare industry, these demographic changes and other recent trends portend significant employment challenges in the near future. 
Considering the comparatively older workforce than that found in many other industry sectors, the growing population of older adults and the expanded group of patients covered by the Affordable Care Act, employers of healthcare specialists must maintain an adequate supply of skilled workers at all levels, while also meeting the increased demand for high quality healthcare services. Healthcare employers will need to rethink their current employment policies and practices to simultaneously retain talented older staff and create job opportunities for new trainees of all ages. Because of multiple contributing factors, the healthcare sector is especially vulnerable to the effects of an aging workforce. By 2020, nearly one half of all registered nurses will reach traditional retirement age. Encouraging older healthcare workers to remain in the workforce will require strategies to accommodate their changing abilities. As people age, they become more likely to acquire a disability or other age-related health conditions that may reduce their functional capacity and affect their ability to do their job effectively. The intersection of aging, disability, and employment results in a complex set of issues for both older workers and their employers. Some people may acquire an age-related disability later in life, such as vision or hearing loss, or other physical issues arising from an accident, the onset of illness, or a chronic health condition. In addition, employees may encounter challenging cognitive abilities or mental health issues that could be related to aging, including memory loss or depression. Individuals who fall into these latter categories may not see themselves as having a disability and may have little or no knowledge of the resources that exist to help them gain or maintain employment. The cost for hospitals and healthcare groups to recruit and orient new NMPs is significant. Not only is there a considerable cost associated with recruiting and orienting a new NMP, a vacant position can also cause significant revenue loss. According to the 2011 Physician Retention Survey, the turnover rate for nurse practitioners and physician assistants in all specialties was 12.6% more than twice the combined adjusted physician turnover rate of 6%. The 2017 National Healthcare Retention and RN Staffing Report stated the majority of advanced practice and allied health professionals reported an increase in turnover when compared to the 2015 results. An increasing NNP position vacancy rate is demonstrated between 2014 and 2016 NNP workforce surveys. The cost of turnover can have a profound impact on the already diminishing hospital margin and needs to be managed. The Center for American Progress estimates the cost of replacing an employee to be equal to 20% of the employee's annual salary. Hospitals and other healthcare facilities risk a significant loss of institutional and workplace knowledge and productivity if they do not find ways to retain and accommodate their older workers. Recent research, in addition to symposium employers and healthcare professionals examples, illustrates a range of strategies healthcare employers are using to help their older workers stay on the job. These initiatives often start with workforce and workplace assessments to study the demographics, skills, and knowledge transfer issues of their current workforce and how retirement or aging workers will affect the organization. Many of the strategies are related to aspects of workplace flexibility, including phased retirement. The Center for American Progress notes that the cost is even higher when replacing professionals who require advanced education and specialized training such as NPs. Therefore, in terms of financial benefit and job satisfaction, it is in the best interest of hospitals and healthcare facilities to retain current employees. Given the relationship between higher job satisfaction and lower intent to retire, efforts to increase NP job satisfaction may result in fewer early retirements. The majority of nurse practitioners reported that the most common reasons for leaving the clinical arena before retirement age were scheduling, early retirement, workload staffing ratios, salary, commute and location, immediate management, and benefits. Research indicates that the keys to hiring or retaining seasoned NNPs include flexible work schedules, for example, weekend, weekends, hours, holidays, job sharing, and shift length location, career advancement, opportunities, and work-life balance. Employers may also have to consider more innovative ways to keep the senior NNPs in the workforce, such as allowing them to work in a consultant-type role or providing opportunities for retirees to occasionally return to work on projects or special assignments. It is also important to mention that staff turnover increases the workload for existing providers, which in turn, can lead to job dissatisfaction and possible turnover among members of the team. 
After a review of the literature, a survey was developed by NANAP and distributed to current NNPs to determine what is considered to be important factors in the decision to remain in the clinical setting. The survey consisted of questions related to physical limitations associated with aging, as well as strategies to keep NNPs in the workforce as they age. A total of 308 completed responses were received. Of those responses, the majority of NNPs have between 16 and 20 years of experience. 75% of the respondents held a Master's of Science in Nursing and 86% worked in a Level 3 or 4 NICU. The average planned age of retirement was 61 to 65 years of age. These pie charts represent the experience level of NNPs who participated in the survey and how soon they plan to retire. The average planned age of retirement was 61 to 65 years. 42% of survey participants had more than 20 years of experience, while all, all other categories less than 20 years were fairly equally distributed between 11 and 16%. 28% of participants reported planning to retire in the next five years, while 30% report planning to retire in the next six to 10 years, meaning over half of practicing NNPs that participated in the survey plan to retire within the next 10 years. The survey participants were asked to answer questions related to their ability and willingness to work as they age. More than 70% of respondents felt they would not be able to continue to work in their current NMP role at some point based on foreseeing the physical and mental stressors of the NMP role based on existing work requirements, with nearly 60% reporting worry and concern that they would not be able to function in their current setting until the age of retirement. Fatigue was listed as one of the most concerning physical effects of aging. Not requiring night shifts followed by not scheduling nurses for call shifts were noted as the most feasible options to engage aging NNPs to continue working in their current capacity. The survey participants were asked to answer questions related to their ability and willingness to work as they age. As mentioned on the previous slide, more than one half of survey participants noted fatigue as the most concerning physical change affecting their capacity to work, followed by the ability to wake up and function quickly and lack of visual acuity. Apart from physical limitations associated with aging, NMPs were asked about strategies that would enable them to consider extending their career as a bedside NNP. Fewer night and rotating calls and self-scheduling were the most favorable strategies. Respondents also reported that benefits such as increased compensation for years worked, professional development programs, and the ability to work a half FTE with benefits would persuade them to consider working in the field longer. As previously mentioned, despite almost 60% of respondents reporting a concern about not being able to function in their current role until the age of retirement, 83% reported their facility or employer had no incentive program to retain NNPs. 90% of those who reported having no professional development program in their unit or hospital expressed the desire to have one. NMPs were also asked about practice changes that would encourage them to continue practicing at the bedside longer. Decreased patient load came in as the most important change followed by not having a transport requirement and the ability to work in lower acuity units. The survey also revealed that NMPs would be willing to continue working in the clinical setting in alternate roles such as nursing education or research. This was by no means an exhaustive study. We were unable to track how many NMPs received the survey to quantify the number of responses in relation to the national NNP population. However, the overall goal was to be able to provide a document supported by our professional organization to help practicing NNPs in negotiations with their employers and facilities to aid in retaining experienced NNPs at the bedside. The bottom line is that we have to remember when nurses and nurse practitioners leave the profession, it not only reduces the total number of bedside care providers, but it also removes their vast knowledge and life experiences from current practice. The first NANAP recommendation is that senior NMPs should be provided reasonable accommodation to implement alternative staffing models, such as differing shift lengths or rotation schedules. These options may include, but are, but are not limited to the following. For NMPs older than the age of 50, night shift should be optional. 
senior NNPs with more than 20 years of experience should have the option to work no more than one weekend per month and one holiday per year. That may mean less than full-time work, allowing more time with family and friends and less time at a job that's become more physically taxing and allowing for some flexibility to accommodate other lifestyle changes. Working in a stressful environment full-time for a number of years can really take a toll on one's health. The second NANAP recommendation is senior NMPs should be provided reasonable accommodation to use non-clinical time for specialty-based projects. Examples of these projects may include, but are not limited to the following, quality improvement and research, policy review and implementation, teaching and education included in their regular hours, professional organization involvement, senior NMPs should have the option to transition some or all of their clinical hours to non-clinical time to retain them at the bedside. The third NANAP recommendation is senior NMPs should be provided reasonable accommodation to use non-clinical hours for service to the profession. Examples of this may include, but are not limited to the following, continuing education credits, certification maintenance, presentations, and writing for publication. NANAM recommendation number four is senior NMPs should be provided reasonable accommodation to maintain benefits without full-time hour requirement. Examples of this may include, but are not limited to the following. Senior NMPs could have the option to go to a 0.75 FTE status with full benefits or a 0.5 FTE status with fewer benefits or be offered retention bonuses. NANAP recommendation number five is senior NMPs should be provided reasonable access to ergonomic assistive devices as needed. Examples of these may include, but are not limited to the following, magnifying lenses for procedures, electronic medical records, decision support systems, insurance covering podiatry and or chiropractic care, back support devices, and standing desks. A brief literature search to evaluate the most current evidence continues to show similar findings to the survey results. The idea is not that every institution or group will implement all recommendations, but it gives nurse practitioners a starting point to be able to begin discussions with management and chief officers in order to begin working together to identify what is important to the individual practitioners and overall groups to determine what changes and accommodations can reasonably be implemented. The full white paper is available on the NANAP website or visit nan.org and search for the Senior Staffing Solutions white paper. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the NANAP Council Senior Staffing Solutions webinar. And we hope this has provided a tool you can take back to your individual hospitals, groups, or units to help maintain our clinical experts in the field.